Okay, good afternoon students, how are you today? Thank you. You're uh, good? Yeah, okay. That's fine. We kind of ended up yesterday uh, starting the discussion of a kind of, uh, should we say, bigger regression model related to some uh, relatively old observations on, uh, on uh, attendance for the local football club. And uh, if you recall from yesterday, we kind of started here, okay? So uh, on the left is the original data, ranging from 95 up and t up to including 2001. And we kind of started up here by observing a very special effect, uh, effect, an effect we may call a stadium effect, which happens when a football team builds a new and modern stadium, then uh, typically more people will attend due to the fact that the stadium is newer, better, has better facilities, better toilets and everything, okay? So it kind of opens up for enlarging your audience. Uh, if you look closely on the figure, you might see that the pattern here after the new stadium was built, it seems to be kind of going slightly downwards. Can you see that? Yeah, and, uh, that's kind of to be, to be expected in some sense, because when you build a new stadium, you would expect that you kind of drag some new people to watch the football match, but uh, some of these new people turns out to be less interested in football as time goes by, probably, and then you will kind of go down to typically a somewhat higher level, but not as high as the initial level. So you, you should expect the stadium effect to kind of decay as time moves on, at, at least logically. But of course there are other things than just the stadium which influences these matches, as we started discussing yesterday. Okay. Yeah, we discussed kind of this extension from a simple linear regression into a multiple linear regression. And the, the difference is of course that you allow for more than one variable on the right hand side of your model. So you 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 kind of accept or foresee that most effects or variables that are of interest to us, they could be caused by more than one variable, as we kind of have discussed already here, but we will move closer into it. <coughs> this is kind of the, the plan for, um, for doing a regression. You, you define your model and, uh, and this should kind of be done in this sequence. Uh, uh, we see a lot of kind of research these days that seems to be done by getting access to a set of data. And then you start looking at the data and you kind of test different regression models and you find some kind of thing that seems to be linked. This is basically not how to do it. You should kind of have a strong hypothesis on what kind of model you would like to look at. So you should ha either have a mathematical model or strong logical arguments which kind of defines your basic hypothesis. And then you should kind of test this by a data set, not the other way around, if you see what I mean. Okay? And you, you kind of see, I think, a lot of research these days, which is kind of based on access to data. And you try, try to kind of find a model that fits the data. That is a kind of dangerous way of doing things, because, because uh, if you have large data amounts uh, with a very high probability, there must be something that seems to be correlated that seems to be linked to each other, even though it may not, and then you may run into problems here. So the ideal thing to do is, of course, to kind of have uh, a model based on strong hypotheses, and you kind of gather the data, and you test your model, and then you can use it for whatever you like afterwards. The other way around is, is really not how to do it. <coughs> okay, as we briefly discussed yesterday, uh, if we, if we think about uh, attendance for football matches, it seems logical that there are kind of three different groups of affecting variables. The first one is referred to as sports factors here. And uh, obviously the quality of the home team is important. The better they are, the more people you would expect. Okay? And you would expect that the team that plays against your home team for a given match also have some impact. If it's a very good team, or if it's a very close team, you would perhaps at least expect more away viewers. 
And uh, so, so this is kind of obvious, isn't it? That uh, we see this all the time. If Manchester United and Manchester City plays, it's more audience than if Manchester United against almost any other Premier League team. So these kind of derby effects is something we need to, to, to be aware of, obviously. Uh, the term uncertainty outcome is perhaps something you don't know what is. But uncertainty outcome may simply be judged as the part of certain sports which cannot be explained by the performance quality of the athletes. So, uh, if you think about ski jumping, you know what that is? Yeah, you run down this hill and the idea is to, run to, to jump as long as possible with certain style points. You, you probably know that the weather is very important for this length, okay? So, uh, so this weather introduces what you could call uncertainty outcome. Some kind of uncertainty which kind of is hard to tackle on the performance side of the athletes. If you think about football, uh, you probably have seen, at least from time to time, that very good teams may lose against very bad teams. So even if the, the good teams play very well, of course there could be some luck here. There could be a single corner, the bad team gets a goal, and they are lucky, luckily able to defend their leads throughout the match. Okay? So, so this kind of stuff is important in sports, because they open up for the possibility of David to beat Goliath. And it seems that Attenders like this, okay, they kind of like, hello, Vimanyu, please enter. They like this option that the really good team from time to time may be beaten, because this opens up for, uh, it opens up for sensation from the spectator's point of view, and of course it also opens up for betting, okay. If you knew what would happen, almost, then it would be very hard to get betting to run. Okay, so, so both these two dimensions kind of are, are dependent on some sort, some sense of uncertainty outcome. And if you look at different sports, you can say that different sports have different uncertainty outcome. So certain sports have less uncertainty outcome. Uh, if you think about handball, for instance, it's a classical example of a sport of very low uncertainty outcome. And you, if you observe handball, you probably also observe, at least in Norway, that, that the number of spectators is fairly low. Okay? You don't see much interest for these sports. On the other hand, there are sports with low uncertainty outcome which have, have high interest. For instance, 100 meter running, if Usain Bolt starts, he normally almost always wins. And you can pick the, at least uh, the five or six candidates, I think, uh, with relative certainty in a certain field. But of course, excellence is also something which stimulates demand. It's not only uncertainty outcome, there's other stuff as well. So, so performance by itself is also something that people want to look at. So uncertainty outcome should perhaps have some influence on the number of spectators. You would expect perhaps that at least a little bit more spectators would attend the match if it's even, if it's kind of a uh, a probability of home a draw or away win, which is kind of close to a third, okay? The closer, the more even it is. Of course, not too close in that case. It's just like throwing dice, which is, of course, very uninteresting. Uh, the term match importance is something that perhaps should be, be relevant. Uh, of course, this match importance kind of thing is related to what kind of tournament you play. So if you play a kind of cup tournament, of course, the, the closer to the final, the more important the matches are, so to speak. And if you play a league, a series, then of course the, the final part of the league would, would typically contain more important matches than the first part of the league. So, so this kind of thing is something that also should draw extra or less attendance. To some extent, of course, coaching decisions, what kind of players are picked on the team, if you are able to know that in advance, may have a certain effect, although I would expect it to be limited. But the choice of coach from the club could have a strong impact. Uh, Manchester United has, rec has recently changed their coach from 
Alex Ferguson to David Moyes. And you might expect that this David Moyes character, he's really not very famous, he's not very well known, he yes, managed Everton for five or six seasons with yeah, average results, so you would kind of perhaps as a Manchester United supporter think, oh, maybe I don't want to see them this time because I don't really trust this new coach, they will lose, okay? So you might, might get that kind of effect. More, uh, much like the effect we had in Molde when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer kind of took over the coaching because he was very famous and everybody had high, high expectations, he even was able to, to fulfill these ex expectations, so of course uh, you could see it the other way around. But in general these kind of effects would be expected to be of less importance than the other effects. Okay, have I missed any sports factors here? What about the event arrangement on the, on the stadium? Entertainment, in the break, food, drink, free Wi-Fi, whatever. Does that have impact on the audience, do you think? Yes. Yeah, maybe not so much on football matches, maybe more on other events. So, so this is a category, category which is not here, okay? but very well could have been here, especially if you think about other types of events. Uh, if you have an opera performance without champagne in the break, maybe less audience will show up, okay? Of course, if you go to La Scala in Milano, you will. There is a lot of possible uh, entertainment as alongside this, this, uh, this uh, main event, so to speak. And this is the kind of thing we see more today, isn't it? That you kind of mix events. You kind of have a main event, but you add other side events which kind of should support uh, the demand for this event. Yeah, th that is show. that is a very good example. Yeah, very big show. Big show. Have you been there? Uh, no. No. But uh, many Mexicans watch on TV. That's yeah. Because yeah. The show and the, the game and everything. Yeah, there's a lot of rock stars and performing and a lot of things have happening around this. Okay, mm -hmm. so so you kind of mix all kinds of entertainment together in kind of one kind of package, trying to maximize uh, uh, attendance. Uh, in the, in the classical European football, there is kind of, what should you say, the, uh, it, it, it seems to be a very conservative business. They, they have kind of not gone along this lane yet. I believe they, they will, they, or actually they have to <laughs> in the future, to kind of keep the audience. So in the future you would perhaps expect that football matches are kind of a little bit more than just football. So, um, but we will see about that, okay? Then there must be some economic factors. Obviously the prices have an effect, we know that. Low prices, more audience, higher prices, less audience. Unless uh, there are snob factors then, so you could kind of increase the price and get even more attendance. But that is typically hard to get in football matches. Although we see some attempts to kind of arrange special whip launches for special audience, we kind of try to take out certain parts of these very tiny snob market. Tickets on events are complicated. Okay, there are different tickets. Uh, roughly you could say for a football match, uh, ticket pricing is discriminated related to the experience of the match. The closer to the pit or the better location, the higher the prices. That seems reasonable. Okay, you should pay more for a better entertainment. But there's a lot of other stuff. It's discounting strategies, it could be certain... If you look at uh, the home team here, for instance, they have kind of decided, uh, uh, since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer came, to, to keep very low prices on European matches. So it's much more cheap for the last three seasons to watch a European match than a Tippe Liga match. This seems kind of special, doesn't it? Why do you think they did this? Basically because they did not have as much of a big audience during the European... Country. But why didn't they have that? Why didn't they have that, do you think? What is the reason for a lower demand for European matches than Norwegian matches? Well, for, uh, naively you could say you would expect to lose <laughs> these European matches, so that could be one explanation. Uh, I don't think that's the case actually here. 
I believe that these European matches are not on the weekends and of course huge parts of the local audience here kind of come in from outside Molde and as a consequence it's much tougher to get here on those days so you would expect uh, less audience or less demand uh, for that reason. So this is a kind of problem for a small town club which of course is not the same problem for a big town club. You, you might expect to be able to take higher prices for these big matches. I used to live in Trondheim in the late 90s, in the late, uh, late 80s and the early 90s when Rosenborg was at its top and of course they played regularly in Champions League playing all the big teams and of course those matches were priced at three times the, the Norwegian matches. So you see the difference here, okay? Very big difference. Population income is something which matters. If there is a very poor population, of course, then you will have to uh, either keep prices high, in that case have few attendants, or lower the prices to get more attendants, but of course that affects your income. So, so these kind of things are linked together. So in general, you would expect that if you compare two situations which are kind of equal with the poor population and the rich population, you would get more people, no matter the pricing, roughly, uh, on the match. Marketing is, of course, important. Uh, how you do that? If you do special marketing, I don't know if anybody you have any feeling for how the local team markets their product. They are running ads before each home match in the local newspaper room, Stolz uh, it's kind of two-page ad normally. Kind of expensive, I would expect. Uh, so that is kind of the regular basic marketing. They have, the, they have their own website, of course, this MFK TV, which kind of regularly runs interviews and stuff before the matches. So they have obviously a kind of structured marketing strategy. Whether it's optimal, of course, is something else. But of course, marketing must be kind of seen related to pricing as well. It must be kind of seen together. You cannot kind of separate these two. Then you may run into various traps. Sponsorships is perhaps something which is not very important, but, um, but you see if you go down to this uh, pitch there's a lot of ads around and there's a lot of companies being flagged and of course you could make some kind of deals with these companies to give them certain ticket offers and they could kind of show up in a larger extent than they did before. And this is very typical in Norwegian football. You have these kind of agreements or contracts between football clubs and various groups, either companies or whatever, and they kind of get special suits and, and maybe more people show up due to, to these facts. Then finally, there are certain external factors. Weather is perhaps the most important one when it comes to outdoor event activities whether it's football or concerts, of course, doing things outdoor. If the weather is bad, then less people will show up. We know this, it's kind of obvious, it's not so pleasant to sit getting wet and cold on a football match. Then the performance of the team must be increased radically to kind of adjust for these negative weather effects. So weather is very important. When it comes to football, uh, as you probably know, most football matches in almost all European, maybe in African and Indian series, I don't know if there's much football in India, in Vimanyu, maybe not so much. Not so much. No, football is not the big sports in India. Yeah. It's cricket, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But in Mexico, there's a lot of football, and in China, there is some, isn't it? Although it hasn't kind of reached its potential yet, I think. Of course, China has one billion. Chinese, they should have the best football team in the world. That's kind of obvious, isn't it? That's obvious. They must be able to reach that point at some future time point. But uh, it takes time to develop this. You have to start when you're young and you have to practice a lot and it may take three to four generations to, to reach the, the level you need. But I, I am certain that the Chinese will reach that level. I would, I would guess in, let's say, 20 years. Then, uh, <laughs> Then there will be a World Cup final between India and China in football. <laughs> yeah. Because India is number two, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay, any questions? Now, if I miss something, you must uh, help me here, okay? <sighs> okay, so uh, certain matches are on TV, that may affect audience, obviously, okay? If, uh, or on the internet, uh, there is a lot of possible ways of watching a match. I should say semi-live, uh, 
direct on TV or on internet, and of course that must affect demand in one way or another. Those who favor TV matches say that when we have matches on TV, that is an adv advertisement or a marketing symbol for the club. So we will get more people on the match. Of course, those who agree opposite, they can agree opposite. Okay? When I can see the match on TV, I ju just don't show up. I see it on TV instead. Okay? But of course, you can basically logically argue for both views. If you look at the Norwegian Tippeliga these latter years, you, you will observe that the number of spectators has gone down, actually, in over the last six, seven, eight, actually almost the last 15 years. Uh, there was a kind of peak around, around this 2001 year and then it kind of went down. Of course, a lot of things have happened here. The Norwegian national team has become much worse in this period. Uh, the clubs have not been able to perform in Europe. Uh, so this is kind of one explanation. On the other hand, there's been a lot or more supply of football on TV and on different internet platforms, of course. That may be one part of the explanation. It's always hard to kind of explain this, okay, because everything kind of coexists. But we would expect that TV matches is or may be important. Especially if it's combined with bad weather, of course, then, <laughs> then you would see a very strong effect, I would expect. The match day may be important, if it's on a Monday, Tuesday and so on. That, uh, of course, that holds for most events. You would expect that most events uh, would, be, would draw greater audiences if it's in the weekend, because people have then more time and they can plan and, and so on. Uh, if they want to drink together, with enjoying the event. Of course, it's easier in a sense to do this in the weekend if you need some time to get fresh day the other the, the day after. And of course, uh, drinking on events is something which is more normal on other events than sports events in Norway. Because as you probably know, serving alcohol is actually not allowed in Norway on football matches at least. On the other hand, on other events like theaters and uh, concerts, it's not only allowed, it's more like a, a rule in a sense, okay, it's uh, yeah, then you should get drunk. I don't know if that's because you don't trust your product, so you, <laughs> you need to get people drunk to, to get them to, to, to be able to stand this noise, noisy rock and roll music, I don't know. Of course, the stra stadium infrastructure is, as we already discussed, important, uh, quality parameters in that, in that dimension. So, Let's look at uh, what we did here, actually. <coughs> now, these are the kind of variables which are included in the model we should inspect. And there are two groups. Uh, I kind of looked at uh, this stadium effect. Obviously, that's a very simple variable to measure. You know when it was built and then before it was not built and after it was built. So that is kind of a binary, zero, one variable. It's zero before and one after, okay? So, so that's one way of modeling that in a regression analysis. We use the so-called binary or indicator variable, as it's often called in regression analysis. But it's in principle the same as we have used when we modeled various logistics models. Calendar effects are introduced because we know in Norway that there are more audience on certain days, like the 16th of May, for instance, uh, which is a classical date for football in Norway. Most countries have certain dates where you kind of have more uh, interest than other dates. They're kind of a traditional kind of thing. Uh, so, so this is important to, to look for. And Derby effects, of course. We know here that certain teams are more interesting both to home as well as away audience. Of course, close teams would open up for easier admittance from the away attendance. So Olesund is a prime candidate to look at and Rosenborg in Trondheim. It's, they are still, of course, the two closest teams geographically to Molde so far in, in Tippeliga. So I would expect more audience then. And, and uh, as you will see, these, these effects are really big and strong here. Of course, the form or kind of the performance up to now for the home team and maybe the away team should have some impact, at least logically. If you are performing well and meet a very good team, that should be an interesting match. That could be decisive in the long run for, for either the cup or whatever it or the league. 
and that, that should have a positive effect on, on attendance. <coughs> so this is kind of a short time variable, we kind of look at performance some rounds before the round you, you, you kind of end up with, and then we kind of introduce uh, what is referred to as status here, kind of what quality has the team you meet historically. And of course when Molde meets Rosenborg, uh, all kind of things happens together. Okay? You meet a team which has a strong history and which is close at the same time. Okay? So you would expect a kind of progressive multiplicative effect on those matches. So maybe you shouldn't use a linear regression. To kind of model multiplicative effects, you, you need to use a nonlinear linear You have to multiply variables, okay? But uh, we refrain from doing that here. It could be that table position is important, because if a good team meets a bad team, then you would expect an easy victory. Maybe that's either more interesting or less interesting. Because as we discussed, this uncertainty of outcome variable is, is kind of tricky, okay? Because some parts of the fans would prefer an easy win, okay? Then they don't have to be so nervous, and they, they go to the match and they get what they expect, okay? A home win with many goals, for instance. That's nice, okay? But then you have this other segment who are kind of interested in an even and very, very close match which with a lot of tension. So, uh, so again, we, we should try to introduce variables which kind of measures this in one way or another. So this table position before the match could indicate this, okay? If there's a long distance on the table, then a good team meets a bad team. Then you kind of have little uncertainty outcome. When they are close, you should expect more. So this variable is kind of trying to, of course with extreme simplicity, to, to cover this uncertainty of outcome concept. So this was kind of all the, the blue variables are those that actually ended up in the model. But when I kind of started this, I also wanted to look at some more variables. Okay? So I, I, I thought weekday and match time must be interesting. And we know that those effects are important. Uh, weather, of course, as we discussed, it should have a strong impact on the actual audience, whether it's a TV match or not. And this importance kind of thing. Okay? So this kind of ended up my preliminary analysis. And if you see here, there is no economical variables here. There's no prices, no marketing, nothing like that. Okay? So why didn't I include that? That was just laziness. Okay? I, I, I didn't find time. I was, I was I had a very short time. I had to do this for a conference uh, many years ago when I was just had a week, I think. So I had to rule out all those variables that would take me weeks or months to get. Okay? And you're getting price information on Norwegian football matches historically back in uh, 95 is not easy. Because they haven't captured it and if you ask them, they say, ah, oh, we don't know. Okay. So then you have to ask people who remember what prices did you pay and then you get all kinds of uh, crazy answers. So, <laughs> so this is difficult, okay? Today, of course, you kind of have registered this. this there has been a certain professional professionalization in this industry, so now you kind of have records for what prices you took before, but in the not many years ago, 10, 15 years ago, you, you didn't have this information available, simply. So I kind of skipped all the economic variables, and these red variables were also skipped due to convenience, because um, capturing the weekday and match time in kind of old data uh, is difficult because then I have to kind of find information for each match and try to look for the day, okay? What day was it played on? This is kind of not regularly taken care of by the tables, for instance. You cannot see it there. You have to go in at it, it, each match and try, try to find the day. And again, of course, there's a lot of errors in the data. Some people register this and some people register that and then you get... Uh, so it, it's really difficult to, to actually find this for, for old data. If you look at Premier League in the old days, all matches was on Saturday, then it was easy. Because these days it's uh, kind of all days, weekdays. So uh, there, is, there is actually a long history in Norway for kind of spreading matches on different days. And weather, of course, not easy to get. Okay? Those who forecast weather, the meteorologists, they've got, they keep some records, but they are kind of... Yeah, I, I can always pay money on a database to kind of get historical weather. 
But then again, uh, do I have the right resolution? I need to have it here in mold. I need to perhaps measure the amount of rain and that, these kind of stuff. And that may not be available, and there's a lot of stuff there. So, uh, so again, auto convenience. I the same with TV matches. Of course, I could call the TV stations, but then I needed to know what, we, what TV stations did actually have TV matches. And in this period, from 95 to 2001, it wasn't so many TV matches. We're kind of irregular. TV matches. One here and one there. So uh, I would not expect that this variable is very influential in those days. Of course today it's a different thing. This importance of the given match I could have done, okay, because I, I, I have access to all these tables so I could have actually looked at dynamical tables, and kind of captured up, picked out all uh, table positions, made some value of the difference, put that in as a variable. Relatively straightforward, but again, time stopped me. Okay. So this is kind of a partial model. Uh, to put it mildly, I just pick a subset of the kind of variables I would like to pick. So, uh, so, so that should be kept in mind here. Okay. Okay. So, Let's look at the actual model. Now, when we do a, a multiple regression model, of course, we kind of enter all the variables, and all the, 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 the parameters we want to estimate. These parameters are called, be used with the Greek beta here. So it's beta 0, beta 1, up to and including beta 10. So there are now 10 variables, 10 variables we want to find values for in the model. And then we have observations for something called MFK underscore pos, uh, which you can see here is the position on the league table before a given match. Okay, so before the match I can look at the table and kind of capture the position. It could be 1 up to 16, at, uh, given that it's 16 teams in the league. We can take it from the top. The attendance is, is of course the y variable here, the, 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 the one we are kind of looking at. So we, we observe these attendance numbers, so there is information available to find it. Unfortunately, it's, it's not easily available. But again, uh, you, you may find it interesting to have a look at this web page, which I told you about yesterday. This one. Now if you go in here on this uh, Norwegian football archive, you will see here that you can st start on the top here and uh, you see all league rounds ranging from 1937-38 actually up until um, today. You see it's changed names here, it was first division and premier division. Uh, and you see last year uh, ended up like this. But you also see that you have a dynamical run through here. So I can go into match statistics here and actually find how many people saw Molde Strömskotse in the first match last year. Okay, it was 9052, so these numbers are available. And of course the date is probably here, isn't it? Maybe it's not. Let's see. Yeah, I had the date, so I could actually easily find the day, okay? But I, I was kind of really lazy, so <laughs> that's the reason. <laughs> so, so you see this information is available, okay, to find the attendance. <coughs> But of course you have to pick it up, you have to go through all these, these dynamic rounds to, to find it. And that, that's kind of a tedious job. Opponent's position on the league table before match I, simple like this one. I just pick both teams and register where they are, where, where. And then I kind of enter this form variable, okay? You know, I talked about kind of how good they have performed re pr uh, previously, and I, I, I pick, kind of do it easy and just pick the points scored by the home team for the last three matches and uh, uh, vice versa for the opponent's team. Okay, so if Molde meets a team, if Molde has won their three last matches, then they get nine. Okay. If they meet a team who has lost, that team gets zero. Okay, so you get values in between zero and nine here for both teams. And then <coughs> we introduce a set of binary variables here to cover up for these various effects. Then I introduce an RBK variable because I know that RBK is, um, 
is uh, a kind of derby opponent. So I would expect that team to have significant impact on the match attendance. If you look at these, uh, there is another one here called Brann, which is of course another team from Bergen. Uh, you might ask why isn't Ålesund here, which is the closest city. The reason is of course that Ålesund was not in the top division in these days. They kind of entered the top division at the 2000, late 2000, so they was not there actually, so it was not important, it wasn't possible to, to put them in. Of course if you do this today, you would introduce another variable for Ålesund here, which definitely would have effect. And then we have um, another boundary variable, which is uh, one if the, the match runs on the 16th of May, and there's always a match on the 16th of May. Not necessarily here. Molde doesn't play all 16th May matches at home, sometimes they play away, so this kind of variable would have some ones scattered out in the, the total data set. The stadium variable we already discussed, it's zero up until data point 39 in this case when the new stadium was built and it's one after that. The Bron and of course we, uh, there is a jazz festival here and normally there is a match, home match in that one. Then there's more people here, you'd expect more people to come. Okay? So this is kind of the setup. So what's next here? Results perhaps. Okay. Now when we do multiple regression, we cannot kind of rely on this simple Excel way as I showed you. We have to kind of use a little bit more uh, advanced methods. It could be done by Excel, but as I said yesterday, it's uh, kind of to some extent buried in normal versions of Excel. So I don't think if I start the Excel version here, I will actually find it. So I've used SPSs here, which is kind of standard statistical uh, program package, I don't know if you heard about it, but it's kind of used everywhere, so it's, it's kind of standard, okay? Uh, what you get out of it typically is the, is the top uh, table here. So here you see <coughs> all my variables. There is a constant, this beta zero, and then there's the, the constant in front of the MFK pos, MOT pos, MOT th three last form and so on. Or became a, and of course, then I get the actual estimates. They are here. Okay? You see, for instance, is that the constant is 4,107, which means that there will at least be 4,107 people in the stadium, no matter what. Okay? So that is kind of running whatever, based on the model, of course, not necessarily on reality. And then you see the effect here. You see, if you see. Um, uh, some odd signs here, for instance. You see that uh, th this is sensible, isn't it? MFK's position is negatively correlated here, meaning that the smaller the number are, the more people come. That seems reasonable, doesn't it? Because if your position is high, then you have a small number. So it should be inversely negatively correlated. You see that the MF core form runs possibly pos positively here, it's a, a relatively big positive number, it kind of says that if MFK has played good for the last three matches, then more people show up. That's kind of what we should expect. But you can see here that the RBK variable is extreme. It's 4,718 people coming just to see that match. Extra. Okay. 16th of May has also a significant effect here on 2036. Stadion is also big, 2800. Brann, you see, is very small. I will talk about these grey shaded areas soon. Okay. You see, there's also a certain effect on the Jazz Festival. Okay, these grey lines are greyed for a reason. And the reason is that these variables are non-significant, as we say. When you do regression analysis, you can test whether a certain value or a coefficient you find is sufficiently away from zero, so to speak. Uh, because it could be that you just get a value and it, this is just luck, so to speak. It's just kind of coincidence or at random. So you need to have it at a certain value to say that it's significant, as you say. Of course, you need some basic statistics understanding, perhaps more than you actually have to really understand. But if, if, you, if you take a basic course in statistics, this will be discussed, okay? This significance of variables. So the point here is that you can actually look at the last column here. And you're looking for numbers which are very small. 
So here, for instance, this RBK here is effectively zero with three decimals, meaning that this, there's close to 100% probability that this value is not zero, so to speak. You see my point? This one, however, of 0 0.5 means that there's a 50% chance that this variable could be plus 46 or zero or whatever. Okay. So normally then you just take these variables out, which are non, which are insignificant. So you kind of pick out those which have a reasonably big probability here. Normally we would say 0 0.95, uh, meaning that you have to take one minus this one to get what you're looking for. So you're actually looking for values here which are smaller than 0 0.05, which should be included. Okay. You see this one is, this one is, this one is, this one is, and this one is at least close to. So at the 95% level, we would pick this, 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 and this, which are the non-grade lines. So all the grade lines, then are there, then insignificant and not picked in our final model. And then what you typically do then is that you take all these insignificant variables, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, out of the model, and then you run it again without these variables. And then, of course, you get a slight change in the values here. Actually, not slight. You see that the constant here actually changes a lot from 4,000 down to 2,978. You see that the RBK variable is even more strong now. Okay? It kind of explains more than it did previously. You remember we talked about the R-square. The R-square kind of tells you how good your line fits your observations. And if it's uh, 1.0, then it's a perfect fit. So uh, this tells us that the original model here with all the in insignificant variables had an R-square of 0 0.72, or, or if you like, 72% of attendance is explained by these actual variables. And when you do this, taking out, you end up with an R-square of 0 0.7, which is very close. And that kind of tells us that, that taking all these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 variables had a very minor effect on explanation power. And that is kind of, in practice, used as a kind of proof that this is the right, right thing to do, basically. Now, actually, this is a surprisingly big number here. Remember that we have omitted a lot here. Okay, there's no economic variables, there were no match days, no, 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 okay? But still we're able to explain 70% by this limited set of variables. What is perhaps surprising is that the performance part is very weak in the results, isn't it? It's only this variable here which has some impact on the audience. These variables have nothing to do with the actual performance of MFK. So basically, if this one hadn't been significant, MFK didn't have to buy expensive football players. Okay? They could do whatever they like. Just as long as they play some matches against Rosenborg and some matches on the 16th and May and so on, then that will kind of maximize their attendance. So there's a very weak link here to the performance of the club. This is kind of interesting because you would expect a much stronger link. This could be explained in the Mulder case by saying that Mulder has very faithful fans. They really believe in Mulder. They don't care so much if they play bad. They come anyway, okay? This is a nice thing for a club, isn't it? You don't have to perform. People will come anyway. There is, however, a little bit of, of, uh, of importance, as you see. And it's, it seems to be the short run information which is important. If they kind of win three matches in a row, then people expect them to win the next one, and then they show up. Okay, time for a break. <laughs>